The number one complaint I hear when it comes to building your own race car is the wiring. So I'm here to make it easy. I'm gonna tell you guys the top 10 things you need to wire your own race car. Number one, your wiring diagram. Now this all depends on if you're going to completely rip out the stock wiring in your car. There are many things you can fix in life. I do not believe that stock wiring is one of them. So I do recommend starting from scratch. As you can see here, my wiring diagram is printed out on two different pieces of paper so that it's bigger and it is going to be filled with notes. It's going to be messy. It's going to be a disaster by the time you're done with it. And if it's not, you probably did it wrong. And then at the end, you rewrite it all. You rewrite your notes and you make it look all pretty so that you can refer back to it if you're at the track or if you're in the garage and you just need to check on something, make it easy for yourself. Now, you may be asking, where do I find these diagrams? Well, engine harnesses, pretty easy to find. I found mine on Holly's website because I was wiring in a Holly Terminator X, but a lot of the times your car has a wiring diagram hidden somewhere or in some book somewhere online. Number two, using the proper tools. And by proper tools, I don't mean the most expensive tools, but I don't mean go use vice grips. Um, there are tools out there worth $400 that you can go get that make your life super easy, but I would rather go the route of cost effective and doing the job correctly. All of the tools that I use come from ProWire.com. ProWire also has the $900 tools, but I don't have the money to be spending on a $900 tool to wire a race car. So I will be leaving the item numbers of the cost effective tools that I use so that you guys can see the job that I do and how the cost effective tools are just as good as the $900 tools. Now, when it comes to you buying your own tools, be sure that you're looking at the sizes that these tools fit. A lot of times it differs depending on what job you're doing and what wire you're using. So triple check on that, check the description. It should tell you exactly what wires it'll fit. And that brings us to number three on the list, using the proper wire. Now, different wires depend on what you're doing and what amperage you're pulling and all that good stuff. So your typical automotive wires um, will come in four different kind of abbreviations, TXL, SXL, GXL, and SGX. Um, they all differ in the insulation size, basically the weight and what heat they can handle. Um, SGX is usually your thicker, more battery cable kind of insulation. Um, TXL is your thinner, lighter, basically universal. You can use it for anything on your car. Um, wire that I use for my engine harness, Holly uses it as well. Now your gauge of wire all depends on what amperage you're pulling through, what you're working with. Um, the typical gauges that I used in my car were 16 to about 20. Um, it just depends on what you're trying to power and what you're sending those wires through. Um, Holly actually makes this really neat table that will tell you exactly what gauge wire to use depending on what amperage you're pulling through. Just like the tools, I also get my wire from ProWire and little Side note, the color of the wire does not matter. All of it is basically for your reference. So if you're starting from scratch and your wiring diagram says you need to use a pink wire and you only have red, you can use red. Number four is a multimeter. Now multimeters can be used for several different things. The main ones that you use on the car are volts, ohms, and amps. And depending on what you're doing is where you'll have that setting. There is a multimeter with a clamp on the top and you typically test your amperage through that of how much amps are going through the wire. Um, there's also a way to test the voltage and that's through the diodes. You have a ground and then whatever wire you're testing. And then there's a way to test the current from one end of the car to the other basically. If you don't know if it's the same wire, you can test it through ohms. Now you might be thinking, I have no idea how many volts can go through this wire or how much amperage I need. And all of that gets answered for you online. There is an online calculator somewhere that is going to answer that question for you. And depending on what parts you're buying, it's typically in the description of how many amps that they're going to put out. There is a range of different multimeters that you can get for the price. One of mine is a bit more expensive and the other one was about mid range and it's nothing special. You can find them at hardware stores and pretty much any automotive store that you go to. The next thing on our list is a label maker. And I know that kind of sounds silly, but it is actually extremely important to make sure that you are wiring things correctly and where they go. When you're wiring, a lot of the times you don't have all the wire colors that you have on the diagram. So 
you end up using the same wire colors and it gets really confusing, especially when you're running things through a firewall like a wiring harness. I would definitely recommend labeling both ends of what they are and where they go. You can get any kind of label maker at any kind of craft store or any kind of office store. I do definitely recommend getting the ones that can use heat shrink because it makes your job so much easier. This brings us to the next item on the list and that is connectors and rubber boots. So ProWire, when you go to order a connector, they actually give you the option to get the male and female side and both the pins and the rubber boots that come along with it, or you can buy a whole pack. Now, when looking at these pins, they're all determined by what connector you're using and what size wire you're using. So be sure to check the description on each one to make sure that you are getting the correct object for what you need. If you are new to the wiring game, I do recommend ordering a couple extra pins and rubber boots because I've dropped rubber boots and they just disappear under the workbench. When you're starting out new and you're trying to learn how to pin things, you typically do mess up. You don't know how much pressure to use. You don't know what tool to use yet. So I do definitely recommend getting a few extra pins for whatever project you're doing. Now that you've got all that, you need the next two things, which is gonna be eight and nine on my list, and that is fuse boxes and relays. Fuse boxes and relays are definitely a more important part of wiring than what most people realize. When it comes down to the important stuff, I'm definitely going to fork up more money, and that is typically towards leash electronics. I have a dual relay, a single relay, and then I have just a fuse board. Although leash electronics can be hard to get, I do believe that it has a better quality than most and I definitely rely on that for the more important stuff in my car. Now that you have everything to make the car run and for your wires to work, you now need to protect those wires. And that's going to bring me to the last things on my list and that's going to be loom and heat shrink. Now a lot of people don't use heat shrink, they just use the loom and that's okay, but to make your wiring hold up better and make it look better, I do recommend getting heat shrink. I do get both my heat shrink and my loom from ProWire. Their loom is a lot nicer. It's more of the woven loom than the plastic stuff. I don't love the plastic stuff. It does suffice for what you might need to do, but it looks awful and in my opinion, I would never use it. Now heat shrink, it kind of depends. You can get the nicer stuff that has glue in it or you can just get the stuff that shrinks around it. Good enough isn't good enough. So definitely, if you're wanting to do your wire job properly, I would recommend getting the glued heat shrink because it will definitely hold up so much better than just heat shrink. Now, heat shrink and loom come in so many different sizes. I would definitely just get um, one of the more basic sizes. And then if you need more, I would order more, unless you plan on doing a lot of different wiring projects. So whether or not you are splicing together a bunch of stock wiring, or if you are completely restarting, I do suggest you get everything on this list. This list is pretty important to almost any wiring job that you're ever gonna do. Down below will be any of the links that I used to completely rewire my car. That would includes leash electronics for fuse boxes and relays, pro wire for wire, heat shrink, loom, connectors, pins, all that good stuff. Um, the multimeter, the label maker, I will post it all down below so that you guys have the same things that I used to completely rewire a car. As always, thank you guys for watching Brittany Automotive. Definitely like the video. And if you have questions, ask them in the comments. You know I'll answer them. I will be having a couple new wiring videos in the short upcoming future, as well as we still have a race car to build. So definitely hit the subscribe button and thank you guys for watching.